Welcome to the next episode of our Conversations with the Pros. Today, we have Jose Kojima. He was a future pro, current college soccer player. So we're very excited to get his perspective on the college game and his pathway there. Someone who has been through a quite different pathway than the normal and average student athlete. Uh, within today's game and has a pretty special story on how he was able to create success getting to one of the top soccer schools in the nation. We hope you enjoy the interview. If there's anyone else uh, or any uh, uh, subject you'd like us to cover, please let us know. Thanks. Thank you, guys. All right. So welcome, Jose. Thank you uh, again for being a part of this process with us. Um, Jose, tell us a little bit about where you are currently so everyone knows uh, where you are and, and what level you're playing at. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Jose Kijima. Um, I play for Wake Forest University. Um, I'm number 16 and um, I'm currently a senior um, going into my final season, um, you know, in the college um, division one uh, league in the fall. Um, and yeah, I, I went to, uh, IMG Academy before this for about eight years. Um, and I'm originally from Japan. That's where I was recruited from. Um, then yeah, here I am, I guess. Crazy, crazy journey. Um, and then for those of you that don't know, Wake Forest is the best soccer school, uh, in the country, in case um, everybody didn't already know that's the Wake field. I might be a little biased, but such is life. Um, so you said you were at down at IMG playing um, high school club soccer for a long time. Um, kind of go through a little bit of the recruiting process. How recruited were you as an athlete or weren't you? Um, and why did you choose Wake over some of the other schools that may have been um, recruiting you? Yeah, so um, it's a very, very funny story, but... Um... I didn't have, I was not a recruited athlete at all. Um, when I was in high school, um, it was more of, uh, you know, trying to go to camps, um, trying to get my name out there, which really didn't work at all either. Um, you know, I basically went, um, all around the country. Like I went Florida camps, uh, North Carolina camps and California camps, um, traveled, you know, most summers, uh, with my parents trying, trying to, you know, get some sort of, uh, good contacts, um, you know, trying to make it, um, but, you know, not a recruited athlete at all. Wake Forest was the only division one school, um, that had contacted me, um, which I'm very, uh, very, very lucky. Um, I feel, and, um, what happened was, um, our coach, Bobby Muse, um, he was down at IMG one day, um, watching one of his recruits, uh, playing for, uh, the U20 national team. And what happened was, I think it was a week before, maybe he had um, decommitted and signed a pro contract uh, in Europe. And um, basically uh, what happened was uh, there was a spot open and he needed a, basically a substitute, right? To fill that spot in. And right next to um, where the original player was playing, um, which was field one at IMG's the stadium field. I was training um, with my team uh, for the U18s um, on the field next to uh, the field uh, stadium field. And what happened was uh, Bobby had turned his head and saw me playing. Um, and, you know, uh, he, he was taught me that, um, you know, it was almost destined to happen, um, me being recruited to Wake Forest. Um, and so, you know, he asked around the IMG coaches and, um, thankfully, I just spoke um, very highly of me, um, and I'm very, um, you know, thankful for that. But yeah, they, um, Steve, Coach Steve Armas uh, called me the next day saying if I wanted to come for a visit. Um, so yeah, very, very, very short recruiting process for me. But um, you know, it happened and worked. So that's unbelievable. That, that is uh... crazy. You just never know. You never know when somebody's yeah. going to watch, right? And yeah. you weren't even playing in the game. You're just okay. training. Yeah. Um, unbelievable. We we always tell kids, Jose, that you, you never know, you know, 
someone is always watching you no matter what, right? Play, play as if every day is a tryout, uh, wherever you are, whether it's just a, a, an easy training or whatever you're going through every day is, is ultimately a tryout, right? That was kind of your tryout to, uh, catch someone's attention. Uh, what would you say the importance of not necessarily getting looked at at that moment, but also having the backing of your coaches of being such a good um, person, being such a good, uh, you know, having such good character off the field as well, that that made it made a huge difference uh, because it's not it's not the typical person that goes to Wake Forest. Uh, right. It's 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 guys that have a mentality that um, is, is, is sometimes much greater than sometimes the player that you are. So how, what was the, what is the importance of you being such a good person? You seem like a great kid. Uh, how much do you think that had to deal uh, with, with you getting that opportunity to uh, get, getting, getting seen and, and taken at Wake Forest? Yeah, I think um, being a good person off the field, um, one of the, one of the most important things um, because one of my philosophies as a soccer player is um, everything you do off the field obviously translates to you on the field. Um, you know, the smallest details, you cut corners, you've probably cut corners on the field, you know, leading to us losing a national final in the last, you know, 90, 95th minute or something like that. Um, and, you know, I very, uh, I stress the fact of doing things right and no, not cutting corners, um, you know, and always striving to, you know, be the best self, be your best self um, as a player and as a person, um, you know, obviously it's all encompassing, I think. And obviously for the, for the coaches to talk to, um, talk highly of me to Bobby was, um, you know, probably the most important things, a part of my recruiting process, because, um, the fact was that the, that day I was training, I had just come, uh, came back from, I think it was the flu, um, and injury at the same time that day. And I was not playing well at all. So it was almost like a miracle. So, you know, having the coaches, uh, um, telling him about me was, um, a very big help. So it, it definitely goes a long way. I think as, um, um, being a good person, um, you know, having good values, uh, good core values as a person as well, I think definitely translates on the field into your career. Totally. Couldn't agree more. Um, I want to ask about the transition uh, from high school into college. And I know the transition was a little bit different for you compared to maybe a lot of other high school players and, and club players out there who haven't lived away from home yet. Obviously, you were already living halfway around the world from your family at IMG. Uh, and so maybe this is a little bit easier for you. But still, I, I would imagine going on to the Wake campus, being a under-recruited player, um, and, and now playing with elite players that are four years older than you, right. And trying to get into the team, right. Um, talk us through like that first preseason, how you felt, um, maybe what teammates did to make you feel welcomed or how you approached fitting in there. Um, if it was difficult for you or you found it, um, not too bad, uh, because I think that that's something that you know, maybe makes kids a little nervous or, or scared about um, going onto a campus for the first time. Yeah, of course. Um, so obviously, Michael, you went to IMG for uh, with the residency program. So I'm sure you know, but IMG is basically college, but for younger kids. Um, so the daily life, um, you know, the lifestyle of college um, transition, it's not, it wasn't even a transition. It was just, you know, more years of IMG for college for me. Um, but the biggest, um, you know, I guess hardship or struggle for me was, um, adapting to a new environment in terms of, um, as a player, um, I didn't really encounter high expectations, uh, like the ones we have here at Wake Forest, uh, when I, when I first came and, um, I, I didn't really know what was expected of me either. Um, so it was very difficult, like this idea of consistency, of uh, you know, being good every single day, um, you know, was not, was not in my dictionary at all. Um, so I was very, very inconsistent my first season. Um, you know, if you look at my stats, um, I started the first exhibition game as a right back, uh, my first fall season, um, started the first, uh, ACC opener at Louisville at right back again, but then taking 20 minutes off 
and didn't see the field that day. And my starting position was taken um, by another another player, Christian Escribano. Um, that was a very big uh, shock for me because I didn't really know um, what I was doing wrong at the time. But you know, it's but but I just I just love the struggle um, to figure things out on your own, um, asking questions, growing uh, as much as possible. That's what I that's that's what I live for. That's my purpose. But yeah, coming coming to college level, it was a big jump, especially from IMG. Um, I don't know if you knew, but IMG at IMG, I did not play um, what at the time was called the the DA. I played on you know the the lower teams, um, so I didn't really get the exposure there as well in terms of uh, level um, level of playing expectations. But it was a huge jump for me. Um, you know, I had to train a lot a lot i had to train um and just you know taking all the information i can as possible um as like a sponge um you know i was asking questions constantly um looking at players looking up um you know to the most detailed movements like how they walk up to the field what they're wearing um you know what they were holding in their hands um what their demeanor was like um er anything i can um i was trying to take in um, you know, to my library and, um, you know, and ended up working, um, you know, a couple, maybe two seasons later. So that's incredible. I mean, the story that you just told right there hits on so many of the things that we talk about a lot, right? About under recruited, right? Didn't, weren't even playing at the top level at IMG, right? Somehow get to a D1 school by a little bit of luck, um, you know, walk on, start your first game, get pulled after 20 minutes. Um, right. And that could absolutely crush a young player, right. Kill their confidence. Right. Um, but the, the growth mindset that you, you exhibit to say, Hey, this is a challenge. I want to overcome it. What do I have to do to overcome it? Right. Ask questions. Fun fact, Jose and I met really because Jose reached out to me and he wanted to ask me a bunch of questions about being a pro and, and the pathway and just a whole bunch of other things, right. Just kind of out of the blue. And, you know, I know a lot, some of the weight guys and things, right? But I didn't have a, a relationship with Jose uh, until he reached out to me and was proactive about it. And, uh, you know, so obviously I see why, you know, that type of personality has led to your success now that you're a senior, not playing right back anymore, um, playing a different position and a future pro. So kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we always say, Jose, that, 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 that there's always a lot of luck that's involved, right? Um, and, and, and all of our stories, there's always a lot of luck, but the amount of preparation and like Parky said, the growth mindset of what you need, uh, in, in regards to getting over every single hurdle that, that might come along or the, the value of resi resilience and perseverance. I mean, you, you kind of, uh, you define those two words and, 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 and creating and creating that pathway for yourself. Um, and I think. One question that I do want to ask is, you, you, I, I also went to uh, IMG. I wasn't part of IMG. I was part of the youth national team. So we were in the residency program that we had there way back in the day. Um, so I can understand also that mindset of going, it's, it's as if you were kind of continuously going into college after graduating from IMG and going, going into uh, Wake Forest. What was your mindset in leaving? You said you were at IMG for eight years. So you went to IMG when you were, what, 12 years old? Yes, I started when I was 12. Okay. So I, I also left home at the age of 12. Uh, I moved to a different country. I moved to Brazil. Oh. Um, and so I'm going to ask you the same exact question that most people ask me. Uh, what was your mindset then? What was on your mind and how did you get through those barriers of culture difference, of being away from family, of being away from home? Uh, how did you keep yourself how did you sustain yourself every single day with what you said uh, in regards to consistent mindset, uh, even at that young age and in, 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 in providing those opportunities for you in the future? Yeah. Um, so I, I get I get similar questions um, from my teammates and uh, stuff as well. But what I, this is always the same answer. Um, and this is another story I'll try, I'll try not to be long winded. But uh, when I came or when I went to IMG when I was 12, um, I was like a failure in terms of like discipline. Um, you know, I would skip I would skip school all the time. Um, one year I had a total of 27 detentions. 
um, basically being written up because I was, you know, not disciplined and just a bad kid in general. And um, that continued about three years. So that consistent mindset was not there. Um, you know, I didn't really have a dream of anything, uh, nothing like that. But um, once I turned 15, um, I don't know what happened exactly, but uh, something switched in my mind where, you know, I started to understand, you know, the amount of money my parents were putting in for my education and for my growth. And I decided that, you know, I was never going to be the same uh, person that I was my first three years there at IMG. Um, so I basically, you know, I had to change uh, and improve in everything. Um, so whether it was going to school, doing my homework, um, you know, giving the best in training every single day, um, eating the right things. Um, it was, it was like a, um, you know, a flip of a switch, uh, everything changed. Um, you know, I had intentions of just, um, you know, basically evolving in such a short time of, you know, everything I was doing. Um, so at that point, um, I would say 95% of the things I was doing in daily life was to become a professional footballer. Um, and as soon as that happened, my grades went up. Um, I started becoming better um, at the age of 15. Um, they put me, uh, they played me up U18s and U19s at the time. And they put me um, as the captain of those teams. Um, so there was leadership uh, development and growth there. But, you know, it was, it was that realization that, you know, I couldn't just be screwing around um, you know, not doing, just doing what I wanted to do, um, you know, getting detentions, being a bad kid. Um, so it was a new purpose that came to me and, um, it was such a great trans transition because everything just became better. My parents became happier. Um, teammates were, you know, more, more cohesive with me. My leadership was working and, you know, it was, um, yeah, it was a great transition for me. That's awesome. I'm I'm a firm believer is that what what you put into something is usually usually what you get out of it. Um. So so congrats, man. Kudos to you as well. And 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 having that flip a switch. I know it's not easy. Uh. But but once you realize sometimes the opportunities that are in front of you, uh, you you tackle it with everything that you have. And um, you, I love the fact that you said. I think all of us, right? We we all have this. We're, we're all committed committed to our cause, right? Once you said, you said you put 95% of uh, everything that you did during your day, whether it was probably nutrition, whether it was probably rest, whether it was probably even school, whether it was probably everything that you did was tailored towards how is this going to make me a better player? Uh, so, so that's, that's cool that you said that, man. We, we, we preach that a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you said that. Pargy. All right, switching gears. Best thing about being a college soccer player and on the opposite end, most challenging thing about being a college soccer player? Mm, great question. Um, just to preface, they're both the same thing. And it'll be the expectations and standards, um, especially here at Wake Forest, that you have to uh, produce and uphold. Um on a daily basis, especially in the fall season. Um, it's the best thing, but it's also the hardest thing there is. And, um, you know, to be able to produce results um, every single day, every single hour, every single minute and second of the day is a blessing, but also a curse. Mm -hmm. right? um, but that's, it's what I live for. You know, um, yeah. when I first came, I didn't have a, I didn't have a social life, um, at all, you know, didn't, didn't go out to parties. I still don't go out to parties or anything like that. I try to socialize, but, um, it's just like, it's that, it's that adrenaline and just the, um, the feeling of winning and the expectations that you set for yourself which for me is perfection um you strive for it every day um but you'll never ever achieve it which is 
it's just like, yeah, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I love, I love it. I love the process. Um, you know, it's when you're off the field, you're thinking about what you can do uh, better off the field every single minute. Um, and, you know, once you step on the field, you're going to execute. Um, and if you can't, you know, you're, you're down on yourself, but that's also part of the process. Um, I also love, you know, love the negative side of the game as well is when you lose, um, you know, you lose, it sucks, but you also learn a lot more. Um, you know, that's how you grow. Mistakes happen. Um, but yeah, pretty complicated answer, but no, it's, not, it, yeah. I mean, yes and no. Right. Because I think Greg and I get what you're saying because, yeah. you know, one of the things we always say to the mentees as well is, is pressure is earned, right? You, you guys yeah. have that, that pressure on you and those expectations yeah. because you have been national championships because you have been number one ranked in the country because you are one of the best programs in the country. Right. So the expectation is that you will be, that you will win the ACC, yeah. that you will contend for a championship, that you will be not only make the tournament, but make, make a run, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, while those pressures are earned because you guys are good, um, it's still tough to live up to those things because it takes a lot of things off the field um, and on the training field to live up to those expectations and that and deal with that pressure. Um, it's not it's not always easy. Um, yeah, it's it's a privilege and an honor to have that, but um, it doesn't make it easy all the time. So yeah, no, I think that we understand right that there's a grind to it for sure, and you have to you have to enjoy the process like you're talking about. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why when people ask, do I, do I miss playing? I'm like, yeah, of course I miss the trophies and I miss the celebrating and I miss the wins and all that stuff. Um, but I don't miss the grind. I don't miss what it takes to achieve those things. So no, I don't want to go back and play right now. Um, yeah. If I was 20, would I do it all over again? Heck yeah. Um, but not anymore. So no, the answer makes perfect sense. We, we speak a lot, Jose, uh, and, and while you were talking, you said about social life and all these different things. And Parky, uh, Parky says it all the time. I don't know if he's sending you the iceberg picture, but it's the 24-7 athlete mindset. Um, everything that you do during, you, you were saying the minutes and the hours and the seconds and everything you do during your day is, 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 is towards trying to be a successful uh, player on and off the field. Um, and, and I think one more thing that I want to speak about that is that you know, the things that you spoke about right now were, were probably, you know, I think a lot of families and a lot of kids have this mindset that they, they, they might want to skip college. And the only way to make it professionally is, is not go to college, right. To not go that pathway, but everything that you just spoke about right now are core values uh, that are going to help you when you do become pro and when you have that opportunity to do so they're going to help you be an even better player uh, because you went through that process and maybe some of those core values you might not have learned uh, if not going through that process so um, whether it was the value of maturity or the value of understanding your responsibilities you said the word consistency a lot today um, understanding the value of consistency holding yourself to a high level of standard and expectation every single day um, and and that's those are values that we try and teach kids uh, all the time that, you know, unfortunately there are a lot of rookies and young kids that we saw within our careers that didn't go to college and they did not understand those responsibilities. They did not understand those ways to hold themselves accountable. So I love the fact that you have that pathway of uh, what you did and, and how you got there, but you're going to be able to use and take those core values with you uh, wherever you go in the future. And it's going to help you tremendously um, and, and, and Parky and I say it all the time. I played for 13 years, dude, uh, almost 13 years. I represented my country many different times. Uh, there were so many better players out there than me. I know there were, right. But I don't know how many better players there were, uh, having this, right. The, the value of, of having a better mindset and the winning mentality and the work rate and the consistency of each and every day, give it my all, uh, to, to, to continue to produce those opportunities for me in the future. And, uh, the way that you're speaking right now, dude, com com completely encompasses um, every everything of that mindset and that mentality. So um, that's that's awesome, awesome stuff, man. You learn those core values within within your pathway. We're gonna have to hire you. 
<laughs> maybe, maybe once I once I reach my goal, yes, but not yet. I'm still, in, I'm still in getting... twenty years when you retire from your professional career. <laughs> oh, that's oh definitely. Right. <laughs> Um, That's good. the last, last question I have, um, is anything that you wish you had known going into college that you learned that you, that might be helpful for someone who might be going onto a college campus in the fall for the first time. Mm. Anything I wish. And it could be about academics or time management or soccer or schedule or, or load or, you know, um, academic counselors or relationships or I don't know. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be, you know, necessarily soccer specific. It's a hard question. <laughs> I like to stump people sometimes. Yeah, it's a stumpy question. <laughs> well, well I'll, as you're thinking about it, I just remember my experience um, where the time management was so important, right? Because when, when we're, when you're playing a sport, right, you've got so many hours a day that are dedicated to the sport that the normal student doesn't have to, you know, worry about, right? They've got time to do their homework and time to procrastinate a little bit and, you know, and go out and socialize more and do this and that, um, where it was like, you know, every afternoon for four or five hours, it was, you know, blocked off for, for soccer and everything that had to do with that. So it was like, yeah, when I, when I wasn't doing that, I was like, okay, I've got this amount of time to get this studying done so I can do that. So I can do this. Right. And it was just like, I had to find a routine and a schedule and the time management was just so crucial. Um, and that I felt really helped me, but it was, it was tough in the very beginning because, uh, that was, that was a challenge for me. Mm. Yeah. I think time management was a big one for me too. But I can't say the same answer. So I'll say something else. <laughs> um, <laughs> how about um how how were the teammates? Um how did the older teammates receive you coming into campus? Was it a case of like they were um you know challenged by you and 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 therefore weren't welcoming, or was it a good family environment like did the upperclassmen do a good job uh, of welcoming you like how do you welcome um new players right is it is it's like a dog eat dog world there or is it uh is it more more of a family type situation um to be completely transparent i didn't really feel welcome my first season here um just because I grew up in a different culture and grew up in, you know, different way than most people. Um, you know, I didn't live with my parents um, since I was 12 years old. Um, one, uh, Andrew Pannenberg, he probably was one of um, the most helpful for me just because he, he made sure that, you know, I was doing all right. And, you know, if I didn't, know um the location of a class you'll help me um meetings um times and locations um you know training consistency training loads readiness all that stuff um just the small things like that he'll always remind me of those things um but yeah from from the other upperclassmen i didn't really feel welcomed so that kind of um you know, it, it lit a fire, um, you know, in my mentality where, you know, I kind of wanted to, you know, bring them down in a way um, where, you know, in training or in games, if I do get some minutes, um, you know, I'll try to, you know, maybe play better than them and at yeah. times. Prove um, yourself, sure. Yeah, of course, of course, prove, prove myself, you know, as a freshman, um, you know, kind of make them worried that, you know, I might take their starting spot a little bit, you know, mess with their minds a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, as, as the time, as time passed, maybe, you know, after two seasons, three seasons, um, one, one thing I realized that, um, that changed my relationships with others was that I wasn't open enough, uh, when I first came here. So I didn't really talk much. Um, I also don't, I'm not, I'm not a person who trusts easily. Um, 
but as we trained together, spent time together in the locker room, um, I started to understand that, you know, um, family is a big thing where, you know, as a team, you need to have cohesion and chemistry, um, which comes from off the field activities, of course, on the field as well, but off the field activities um, where you get to know the person and you get to connect on a more deeper level uh, than, you know, just on the field. Um, and, you know, you start to understand how they think, um, you know, where they'll be in certain situations on the field. Um, so again, it's, it's all encompassing. Um, as I said earlier, um, personality defines, you know, how somebody plays, um, and off the field discipline, um, habits, um, always connect to, you know, the overall, um, I guess, you know, values, uh, of a soccer player on the field. So yeah, to answer in short, um, you know, even if you don't trust uh, people easily and maybe you're going to a new environment, um, it's always trying to connect with others, connecting with the team, um, you know, in all different levels and scales um, is the most important thing to adapting to a new environment, I think. Totally. Well said. Well said. Greg, you got any anything else? I mean, I think... I mean, I think this was, this was great, man. This was great. It gives a, uh, we always, Jose, we always try and find different perspectives and different ways um, of how, I mean, you're the first, the first college player we, we, we've we had. Um, I'll be quite frank with you. You probably have the best mindset of, of every other person that we've, uh, we've had on board with us. Um, just in regards to your, your, the, the, the way you view things and how you, uh, and how you value certain things are 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 pretty cool, man. It's uh, no, no wonder no wonder Parky is uh, it, it has the the mindset and the mentality that he has. Um, I also had a little bit of uh, Jake Vitovich in me when I was a kid because he was uh, always involved in residency with John Hackworth as well when I was uh, in the residency program. So um, you know, I look at I look at so many coaches, the importance of coaches and the importance of um, kind of our elders paving the pathway not only for opportunities but also the mindset and it's very very clear that your your mindset has been uh paved the, the, the best way possible so um i mean that's 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 it for me man park i don't know if you have anything else to say but i mean it's been an absolute pleasure to to see uh i mean either you as uh, at such a young age dude to have have the mindset that you have um, I don't know what your next steps are in life or hopefully as a pro and hopefully you have the opportunity to, to, to play at a, at a high level, man. But, uh, Parky and I, we always, we speak to a lot of kids, Jose, and we always say when we finish with a kid, we'll be like, if, if that kid has the opportunity to become pro, he's got it. Right. Um, and, and I'll say the same thing for you. Uh, if, if, if that opportunity comes to play at the highest level, dude, you, 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 you got it. Just don't, don't change that mindset. Don't change that mentality because that'll get you much further uh, than everybody else, right? That 1% more of, of the way you think and how you carry yourself and how you hold yourself accountable and the responsibilities that come along with it. It's, it's all about being a good pro. Uh, best piece of advice that I got when I was about 20 years old, I became pro very young um, and probably around your age is that, uh, this guy I was driving in his car, he had won tons of championships, played in the world cup, uh, played with the national team in Mexico a long time. And he told me, Greg, everything you do before training determines how successful you'll be in training and everything you do after training will determine how successful you are tomorrow. And I lived, I lived by that for the rest of my career, right? Every decision that I made before training and regards of preparation, prehab, all the kind of stuff that I could do seeing a PT, whatever it might've been, I did everything I could. Uh, and yeah. after training at home, everything I did was trying to prepare myself for the next day. Uh, and, and that's, that's the life of a pro man, right? It's, uh, it's not how good you are. It's, it's, uh, there, there are a lot of good guys. It's, it's how well prepared you are. So, um, um, yeah, whatever, man, we're always, I'll say this, Parky's probably already there for you. If, if you ever need anything as well from, from, from my end as well, always feel free to reach out. Um, and, and I wish you the, the, the absolute best of luck, man. Absolute pleasure to, to have you on with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Jose, if you have actually one more minute, I've got actually one quick question that came from what Greg said. I think it's be useful for kids. Take us through real quick, uh, a typical day in the fall. 
say, say you've got training, not a game day, a, a training day. It's a school day, a training day. Real quick, a, a typical schedule for you. Typical schedule. Um, so start, you just start from fall. wake up to classes to whatever, okay. whatever you do. Okay. Um, so usually in the fall, we'll train at 3.45 p.m. So training doesn't really start yet, but I still do wake up at around 5 or 5.30. Um, so I get up. Um, I do my regular morning routine, uh, you know, brush teeth, um, make coffee. Um, I guess that's it. Maybe go for a walk sometimes. But um, yeah, after that's done, um, I usually do homework in the morning. If not, I'll I'll do like film analysis um, on whether it's our games or, you know, professional leagues uh, in Europe and around the world. Um, and usually that's from like, maybe six to seven thirty seven, and then I'll have breakfast, um, at my apartment. Um, usually like rice and some protein and then right around nine or 10, maybe if, if I'm, if I have a knock or something or an, an injury, I'll go in, um, to the training room to, you know, take care of the body a little bit, um, do some rehab uh, on whatever is hurting. Um, and that's probably about 10 30. And then I shower and I'll go to uh, class um, usually from around 11 to maybe 1 45 or two. Um, and the longer days it'll be 11 to 3 15. And then I'll go back to the locker room, change really quick. And then I'll go to training at 3 45, which lasts about two and a half hours. Um, so three or 45, maybe to six, let's say, and then I'll stop by to get dinner with the team usually. And then once I eat, I come back and then I'll do maybe a little bit of film again and some journaling. And then I go to sleep at around eight, eight thirty. Awesome. Awesome. Again. Valuable. Um, no, like Greg said, we appreciate the insight. Uh, I think it'll be really helpful um, for the younger generation that are hopefully uh, are hoping to be in your shoes one day and then um, in our former shoes um, further on down the road. So we wish you the best of luck. Um, yes, like Greg said, we're there for you. Any, any, anything we can do. So oh, thank no, you. Really. We appreciate fun. it.